Hello dear students, welcome to Devi Goss Commerce and Management Academy. <coughs> I did not bring any stick, you are scary. Anyhow, whenever required, I use it. <coughs> As per your request, uh, higher purchase system and installment purchase system. This chapter I am starting. I know many of you are waiting. Very easy chapter. <coughs> you know that in general words, general language, if you just observe, how will be the purchases and selling is happening? Suppose vendor, <coughs> A is a vendor, A is a vendor, he want to sell his goods only on cash basis. If he want to sell only on cash basis, he might be selling in a month only 100 products. Cash basis, 100 products he is selling. The same products, if he want to sell on credit basis credit basis many customers will come because need not to pay total amount at a time only sound parties cash parties can buy the products if it is on cash basis if he has to sell on credit basis many people installment basis na, need not to pay the total amount slot wise will pay every month some amount will pay so all the middle class people lower middle class people they'll enter they'll be showing their interest to purchase the product maybe the products are going to increase to thousand see the difference 900 this is called as higher purchase system in higher purchase system the seller is not going to get the total amount of the products at a time Seller is selling the product, position is over, position of the asset is over, but payment is installment wise. Installment wise, this uh, purchaser is going to make the payment. Best example I will give you. Suppose say, um, I have purchased a product at the cost of 50,000. Cost of the product is 50,000. How will I make the payment? down payment i want to make down payment i am telling you all the terminology and everything down payment i wanted to make 5000 rupees what is the meaning of down payment initially some amount is to be paid to them installments later i'll pay you 5000 give me this product i want to take this product to my home refrigerator tv scooty car anything it can be or even cell phone also so i'll give you down payment right now cash 5000 i'll pay rest of the amount i'll pay in installment wise every month i'll pay rest of the amount now 5000 i'm paying it what about the rest of the installments say for 50000 he is saying that you have to pay five installments every installment first installment to fifth installment every month you have to pay 10,000 rupees agreed 5,000 paid and then I took the product came back to my home started enjoying that with that product but payment is every month I have to pay 10,000 rupees this is called as higher purchase system in higher purchase system position is over I took the product but the rights of the product the rights of the product i am not going to get until i make the last payment of 10000 five payments i have to make 5000 anyhow initially i paid 10000 rupees 10000 rupees like five payments i have to pay until i pay the last five fifth installment i won't be getting the ownership only product is given to me this is higher purchase system here one more important thing remember in between using this product if I don't like the product I can return back I, I can return back the product and vendor is vendor means seller higher vendor means seller so vendor is going to take back this product and we can settle down in case uh, I am unable to make the payment say 10,000 I made one time first installment is over and second installment is also over both the installments I paid and from third installment onwards I am unable to make the payment 
default it's a default case unable to make the payment whenever the uh, so purchaser purchaser is unable to make the payment vendor is having full rights to repossess the asset vendor is having the right to repossess the asset means vendor can take back the asset from me because i am unable to make the payment only two payments i, I have done third payment i couldn't so vendor is having full right to take back take back full right to repossess the asset now at this stage what will be the payment whatever i have done 5000 already down payment i have done first installment second installment i have done 25000 i made it but i'm not going to get anything i'm not going to get anything being a purchaser vendor is having full right to take back vendor is having full right to forfeit this amount like uh, i used for some period two months i used it for that he is assuming that this 20000 is for using the asset rent that is why i am not going to get anything but vendor is having the benefit now this higher purchase system now i am talking about higher purchase installment purchase we'll see later higher purchase system is useful for both the parties who are the parties purchaser and vendor higher vendor we can say higher vendor for both the parties it is useful how purchaser i am purchaser i am not i need not to pay the total amount slowly i'll make the payment plus so many purchases are there in our society so for them it is useful slowly you pay the payment take the product to your home in that way it is useful and it won't be burden for the purchaser also at a time need not to pay so in that way it is useful and for the vendor as i told you if he is selling cash basis 100 products only he is able to sell but he is selling on credit basis 1000 products he may sell so payment will be more now coming to the profit to the vendor how will be the profit same example let me take cost is 50000 how much i made down payment 5000 installments five installments 10000 each total amount how much i am making payment one is 5000 down payment down payment 5000 all the installments 1 to 1 to 5 not and 1 to 5 installments i am making payment of 50000 10000 each payment na so how much i am paying total 55000 i am making payment whereas the cost of the product is here 50000 only 50000 product i am making 55000 the difference 50000 to 55000 the difference is 5000 this is interest interest extra amount i am paying to the higher vendor for using installment for using this system i am making extra amount of 5000 so vendor will be happy instead of 50000 he is getting 55000 though it is a little bit later doesn't matter so this is about higher purchase system am i clear we'll see a few points related to the higher purchase features so that you get a theoretical knowledge then after that we'll go for the practicals now features of higher purchase system what are the features first one it's an agreement between seller and purchaser first feature is high higher purchase system means it is nothing but an agreement between the seller and purchaser okay this is we know next one possession immediately after agreement once if you make 50 5000 of down payment you are entering into agreement once if you enter into the agreement after agreement immediately possession will be given to you possession means you can take the asset to your home start enjoying with the product okay possession immediately after agreement and payment in installment payment like 10000 every month i want to pay five months so like payment in installments this is third feature next ownership will remain with the seller only unless you pay the last payment of 10000 ownership is not going to change if you don't pay owner is having the right to take back the asset that is why ownership is not going to change ownership will remain with the 
seller only owner is seller until you make that last payment okay and another feature is option to return the goods to seller as i told you after making two installments i have an option if i don't like i can return back the products but i'm not using that option and not paying means that becomes default okay option is there anyhow and in case default of payment so here it is option to return the goods to seller in case of default of payment seller has right to repossess the goods seller is having full right to repossess the goods so these are the main features which already we have discussed here theoretical point of view i told you now in higher purchase system we have to maintain the accounts in the books of purchaser and also in the books of higher vendor both the parties are there na where did i write now here purchaser and higher vendor in the books of both the parties we have to prepare the journal entries or ledger and ledger accounts most of the times ledger accounts only they'll be asking in the initial stage you should learn how to write journal entries also so today we'll focus only on the purchaser in the books of purchaser what are the journal entries we have to write i'll make you understand very clearly just focus you will buy hat and uh, you will remember easily in the books of purchaser so journal entries in the books of buyer or purchaser total how many entries are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 six entries first entry when asset is purchased on higher purchase system asset is purchased first entry asset is purchased general 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 entry tell me whenever you are purchasing any asset you are purchasing an asset asset is coming debit what comes in so asset account attached to payment asset account attached to payment but here just entering into an agreement so asset account attached to higher vendor's account this is a credit transaction not paying the payment if you are making payment asset account attached to cash account general right so here it is a installment basis so that is why or credit basis that is why we are saying asset account attached to higher vendor account credit transaction always will take the seller general general interest you know you remember asset purchased attached to seller account if it is cash to cash it is a credit transaction so higher vendor's account asset account attached to higher vendor account whenever you are purchasing an asset i purchased an asset entered into an agreement so asset account attached to higher vendor account then here down payment i am making for down payment immediate entry second entry will be the down payment some amount down payment you have to pay then only you are eligible to take the asset so down payment something you have done for that second entry for down payment of cash down payment of cash i am paying to whom higher vendor debit the receiver so higher vendor's account at r to credit what goes out i am making the payment to cash or bank account generally you can use bank account only higher vendor's account debit the receiver credit what goes out in that way whenever you are making payment higher vendor's account at r to bank account down payment to enter so our purchasing asset asset account at r to higher vendor's account second one down payment for down payment uh, to whom you are paying higher vendors higher vendors account at r to bank account next for interest due at the end of the year every year interest you have to pay 50000 like whatever you are paying every year total interest is 50000 5000 here but every month or every year you have to make the payment for that interest interest due at the end of the year interest due how much is the interest due for that general you can assume that interest account at our interest is an expenses all the expenses debit side interest account at our to higher vendors account to whom you are going to make payment interest account at our to higher vendors account this is interest due okay then after that fourth entry for payment of first installment interest is over first installment every year 10000 i have to make okay first installment for that payment entry 
for the payment of first installment. To whom you are paying? Higher vendor. Higher vendor's account attached to bank account. This is almost similar to this entry. Second entry and fourth entry. Both are same entries because whether you are making down payment or installment, entry is same. The bid the receiver credit what goes out. So higher vendor's account attached to bank account installment. Able to remember first asset purchased, second one down payment, interest due, interest account attached to higher vendor's account. Then fourth one, fourth one is here talking about down pay, first installment. First installment is same like down payment. Debit the receiver higher vendor's account attached to credit what goes out to bank account. Four entries are over. If you remembered four entries now, four fifth and sixth are quite easy. Fifth one is. For depreciation charge, you have to provide depreciation also for the asset. For that, depreciation account attached to asset account. When depreciation chapter, did you remember? Whenever you open depreciation account or asset account, if you open asset account, depreciation will be on the credit side. In the same way, depreciation account attached to asset account. For depreciation, depreciation account attached to Asset account. Okay. Now last entry. Quite easy. For transfer of interest and depreciation to profit and loss account. Here we have interest and here depreciation. Both are losses, na. Both we have to transfer it to the profit and loss account. Where does it lies in profit and loss account? Losses debit side. Expenses losses debit side. In the same way, profit and loss account debit side we are transferring the interest and depreciation entry. Profit and loss account data to interest to depreciation. Clear? Easy to understand? Let me tell you once again. Simple six entries are there. Purchasing asset, higher vendor's account data. Whenever you are purchasing asset, asset account data to higher vendor's account. First entry. Second one for down payment of cash. Some down payment you are making. To whom you are making payment? Higher vendor. Higher vendor account data to cash account. And third one is interest due, interest account attached to higher vendor's account. Fourth one, first installment payment, same entry comes, higher vendor account attached to bank account. Fifth one, for providing the depreciation, as the, the for depreciation account, the for that depreciation account attached to asset account. Hope you remembered. Whenever you prepare asset account. Whenever you find depreciation, it comes on the credit side by depreciation. Depreciation chapter, same one entry. Okay, so depreciation attached to asset account. Then depreciation and interest both as both thought to be transferred to the profit and loss account. Profit and loss account attached to interest to depreciation. That's all. Simple. Hope you hope it is clear. Want to take screenshot? So what you have to do, understood basic concept and feature and six journal entries, okay. So write the notes clearly and try to by heart or remember these entries and next class will work out one problem, short problem. Stay connected, don't forget to share this video. Good luck.